This was very silent. Uh, let me uh, just for the warming up make an observation of what we uh, did uh, of what we had last time, just one second. As you can see, I, I, I mean, I felt I did not explain enough uh, this graph. What we had here, where you had the G, the two generators of uh, SL3. You have G1, which was U1. So these were the, uh, this was a picture here. You had U1, maybe let's put it like this, U2. And this was G1 was U1 plus, uh, U2 inverse plus uh, U2 U1 inverse, and similarly G2 is equal to U2 plus U1 inverse plus U1 U2 inverse. And uh, this is, so the, uh, they, so all commute, And so they have common, common eigenvectors, which, as we showed last time, give the um, eigenvectors for translation, which is the higher. Coxeter um, Coxeter elements, and so they have common eigenvectors. And here we take the eigenvalues of U one, and here the eigenvalues of U2, yes, and this is supposed to be the interval uh, 0, 2 pi i over n, and this is 0, similarly 0, 2 pi i over n, yes. The eigenvalues are exp exp of 2 pi i over n times u k in a way some u v and this is the this one gives the eigen values so this is a weight so this uv is a weight yes this inner product is uh, an integer over 3 in this case and so this is a kind of log of the uh, eigenvalue and this way when you write this uv in a product with u1, and uv in a product with u2, the result is that these are the eigenvalues, as you can see. But the, so you get here some number and here another number, yes? So this corresponds to UV. And why do you think I had to stretch the 
the picture because U1 and U2 are not. Well, look, what we're putting is the inner product of some vector UV with each of them, with U1 and U2. But U1 and U2 are not. They're not orthogonal, yes? They're not an orthonormal basis, right? And so the uh, correct way to plot them is to, straight, to deform the picture so as to make it geometrically correct. And you see, once you make it geometrically correct, then the vial group appears, yes? It's a group that, that rotates everything. So there are, uh, there, as you can see, uh, 12, 12 eigenvectors UV, yes, uh, which I highlighted in red, and five more reflections of them, yes? So they are all together 12 times 6, 72 eigenvectors. Uh, I, I can make joint eigenvectors, yes, because the, uh, in this case, the graph was a star. Look, this is a list that I obtained, yes? The, I took log, as you can see, the logarithm over 2 pi i, yes? And I obtained this list, and this list made no sense until it got plotted. Yes, uh, then what appeared was exactly, so this is, a, this is the exceptional that is part of a series that was, that was constructed by Zhang Guilu. So, uh, very good. Yeah. Uh, this is in the subjacent representation. So here, if we work with SL3, this is, in a this is among the weights of, these are among the weights of SL3. So we are at SL3 here at a root of unity. Thank you. So uh, at a root of, uh, the root of unity is, uh, uh, as you can see here, the period, uh, just a bit. Into. Well, you see the root of unity is this, the length of the mirror, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes? Right? We are at the eighth root of unity. Okay, so this is SL3 at the eighth root of unity. Yes? So uh, what, you can, what you see here is a graph AN. Can you see? is between three mirrors. So this would be the trivial representation. If you write it as representation, this would be the representation uh, uh, two dots horizontally, yes? Trivial two dots horizontally, uh, and so on. Yes, so this is the other, and it's cut off. So this is a main uh, vial chamber in red. And it's cut off, so it becomes an alcove. That's a technical term for this, yes? And this alcove is repeated by, by uh, reflection in the mirrors, yes? And uh, the statement is the following. The unitary is U1, and you, so you, you take the eigenvalues of that graph. Okay, so these, let's make them not, let's make them eigenvalues. I don't want to use a different notation of the graph G, which is that star like this. Yeah, it will appear. So these are the eigenvalues of uh, G and uh, G1 and G2, and we simply write them as a sum of unitaries like this, yes? Uh, everything commutes, 
because G1 and G2 are, are uh, uh, operators of multiplication by, by the generators. Yes, so the generators with which we multiply commute, the, uh, there's a braiding in the, for quantum groups. Yes, so whenever you tensor two things, you can braid them to the tensoring in the opposite order, and they will give you the same byproducts. Now what we do is we write this tensoring with the generators as a sum of unitaries according to the respective representation. So for instance, for U1, we take this vector, this vector, and this vector, written exponentially, multiplicatively, yes? So this is U1, this is U2, U1 inverse, and this is U2 inverse, as you can see, right? We write them like that, and, uh, and then we get some unitaries now, which commute, so just by functional calculus, we, we expand them in. These unitaries, as you have seen, if we take the ribbon, which is a product of this, with weights, and we put each unitary as multiply in a direction, one, you one, you exactly like here, yes? Then we'll get the, the higher coxet elements as translations. So we have the higher coxet elements, the, uh, we have, uh, uh, for in the higher case, the, um, um, the subspaces, the invariant subspaces for translations, which are exactly the uh, um, exponents, yes? So, but uh, for SU2, we have two translations, but they commute. And these are unitaries, and here I uh, plotted them. So obviously, since they're, roots, since they're eigenvalues for unitaries, they will be num complex numbers of modulus one. Yes, and the proper way to plot them is to take the logarithm divided by two pi i. Yes, and then you get, because there are some roots of unity, this is two pi i over n, and in this case, uh, in the case of that star, the n was eight. So the star has level five. There are five things in red, as you can see. Yes, so you get from the trivial representation up to something of degree five. And n, so that's called the level in physics, the highest degree which is not killed. And then you have the, the period, which is a period in the mirror, the additive period. Remember that what you see always in Lie groups is both a multiplicative and an additive structure, yes? So this should be a conclusion of this course. The additive one has the mirrors, the reflections, and all that, yes? So it refers to, uh, to the diagonal algebra. Diagonal algebra is a billion, so it has some uh, nice additive uh, uh, eigenvalues. The multiplicative part is that those things become, those uh, points become irreducible representations, which are tensored. Yes, and then of course they have a different unit, which is uh, uh, which is the trivial representation, a corner of that. Yes, and the three corners are actually the group Z mod three, acting on the whole thing. Uh, uh, the eigenvalues are plotted here, so all the eigenvalues come from for a given. We have some u one and u two. They correspond to roots, to weights, as you can see, yes? And there's some other V, UV here, and you take UV in a product with U1 and UV in a product with U2. Yes, that would give you two coordinates. These coordinates are not quite orthonormal coordinates, I mean, co you know, coordinates for orthonormal vectors, so you stretch the picture a little bit to, uh, uh, to, make, to, to, uh, to make them geometric, and you get exactly the picture there, yes? So you have the inner product with a couple of, uh, uh, with, uh, so this, this explains the spectral structure of the ribbon, basically. And also the spectral structure of the graphs. 
So that star that we have drawn has this as spectrum, yes? The proper way to do the spectrum is this one. Then you can add the exponentials and you get the, the spectrum that was seen if you just take G1 and G2, yes? But the proper way to plot the spectrum is with U1 and U2. Any questions? Oh. Exactly. U1, U2, uh, the complexified, uh, so they, they live on the torus, and they are translations exactly. Do you see this is a torus here? There's a period of the torus, the period which is a torus, yes? And they have exactly the, uh, so here the, the power is exactly the length of the torus, the period of the torus. Uh, they would be entries, except that these are weights. So today we'll, we'll go for the higher matrix. You see that what appears are the roots. What appear are the roots, yes? And that's what I'm going to do today. Yeah? But these give uh, very nice translations because, as I said, if you translate in, the, in this direction, you'll multiply everything by U1, right? If you translate in the direction of the three neighbors, so if you take the sum of the three neighbors, you'll get exactly this sum, which is the eigenvalue G1, yes? Which is exactly a sum of neighbors by definition. That's the eigenvalue of the graph, yes? So the sum of neighbors on the graph, if you take the corresponding eigenvector, will have eigenvalue G1. And the sum of neighbors on the weights will have also the same eigenvalue, yes? So this is a, uh, a biharmonic vector, yeah? These are biharmonic vectors. So they're in the space of, linear space of the, of the roots. Any questions? Then we'll, uh, we'll uh, move on and we'll go now to the construction of the diagonal. So this, is uh, the diagonal construction, the higher diagonal. And remember that uh, what it was generalizing was, this was for the usual ribbon of SU2, of SL2. Yes, uh, we had here Roots here we had uh, uh, the ribbon, something like this, and uh, an element here would give you uh, would give you uh, a plus one and a negative one and the rest zeros on the diagonal. Yeah, that's a diagonal of the matrix, the period here. And we just said that the way we view it is we view it by reflections in some mirrors. So let's do the same here. Uh, this is our ribbon. And in this case, we take the case where G is of type A N, G is of type A, and G is this graph. Well, actually, we'll be correct for once, and we'll, uh, uh, this is, So this is the tensoring with sigma one, and this is the tensoring with sigma two, where the corresponding, so sigma one is sigma uh, a single dot, and this is a sigma 
two vertical dots. 4SL3. And this is V, which is C3. And this one is V wedge V. Yes, so these are the two forms. So here you have sigma empty, which is the trivial representation, and this is sigma 1 and this is sigma 2. Yes, so this is a graph of tensoring. Uh, what is this graph? It's a cutoff. You can see the mirrors here look like this. So this is a cutoff. Uh, can you can somebody uh, tell, tell us what's n in this case, the Coxeter number, and what's the level? Level is it's the highest degree which uh, survives in physics. One. one. So the level is one, and uh, the Coxeter number n is 1 plus 3, the 3 account for the distance to the mirrors, right? Which is 4. Yes? So we are at the fourth root of unity. Fourth root of 1. Uh, what are the numbers? Once you would be there, 1 is 1. Uh, 2 is... Uh, uh, let's uh, uh, two is root two actually I think and uh, three is one and four is zero. So this is one dimensional. This one would be three dimensional, but three is one. Yes. And this is three-dimensional, so all of them are one-dimensional. So this is a ribbon here. So it's a product of weights. Weights of SL3 at the fourth root of, fourth root of unity. Cartesian product with our vertices of G. And here I oriented them to be the tensor product with sigma 1. So how do you write a Cartesian product? Here you just, one of the ways to do it is to copy the graph many times, yes? If you have a Cartesian product of two big things, you just put one of them of the other. You could also make a big triangle in which you put the, the roots at every vertex, yes, if you need to do it the other way. And here, this would be the diagonal. So the period here is four, as you can see, four weights, yes, and it's a torus. So this part is glued, this one is glued to this, yes. And notice also that if we, uh, if we test, uh, so uh, uh, look here, uh, as you can see, uh, here when we glue the torus, we also need to apply one of the uh, uh, rotation elements. Remember that the outside elements were Z mod 3. So in this case, we are we we have level one where we get exactly z mod three. Yes. And uh, the diagonal would be a four by four. So this would be the diagonal of uh, our higher matrix. Yes. And now to make the correspondence between them, we'll take a. Uh, we'll use one to position, so one of the coordinates. So we'll take one root from here. Uh, now, uh, uh, 
you see for technical reasons it's slightly better. We, we must put the period somewhere and we can put the period of weights to be right here in the middle, for instance. Do you see this is a period of weights? So here the weights are uh, thin points and the roots are thick white points, yes? So this is a root. And this is, I mean, in the root lattice, really. But I'll just uh, call them informally roots. And this one is in the weight lattice, but not in the roots. Yes, a point like that. And the figure that I always have in mind is some kind of rhombus or so. Uh, here, in the case of SL4, they are a little bit... Uh, uh, now, if these, the, 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 the roots and weights uh, look is different, yes? Here, the roots are in, let's say, white. Yes, so every fourth one is a root. And if you put the roots by themselves, uh, you get this picture. Yeah, not at scale. They're not at the same scale, yes. So uh, these ohms come in, in different scales. Okay, so now what we're going to do here, we're going to take one of the, one of the points, and uh, uh, when we move here, we'll move backwards. So we'll take one of these points, And we'll write a corresponding uh, diagonal element here. Look, we build the mirrors. And so we're going to build the mirrors. The mirrors are centered at the weight in general, not necessarily a root. So I'm going to build the mirrors here. Let me make sure. So these are the vial mirrors. Now, uh, what do you see? What's the part which is in the middle? This is exactly our graph of type AN, yes? So this graph here is, uh, is our graph of type AN. Yes, so this is our graph G. And... Uh, uh, now, it's important that we pick uh, a, a weight here in our graph, which is a, not just a weight, but it's in the root lattice, yes? Do you see, like here. Yes, this was, the plus one couldn't be here. So, uh, the... Uh, uh, in terms of SL2, the roots are integers in physics, and uh, the weight lattice is uh, made of half integers. Yes, and as you can see here, the horizontal levels are half integers, but the plus one and the negative one fall on integers. So we are going, so our weight is going to be this one, and I'm going to make it red. And it's definitely not the one here, so... Let's assume we, we chose one... Uh, um, okay, so this way it went... Uh, 
Yes, here we went in the direction of the arrows. And uh, so when we go in the direction of the arrows, which is this way, uh, the arrows also go this way. So here we also go in the, in the direction of the arrows. So this is this and this is that. So let's say that our thing is this one. the weight that we're building. So this is here plus one. And we reflect it now. And we get here a negative one. And here is going to be a negative one. Uh, here is going to be also a negative one. Here plus one. plus one, this is a mirror, and so here the reflection is this one, which is a negative one, a plus one. So this is the, these are the affine reflections, a negative one. I think that uh, we have just about everything, which is in these periods, maybe one here, which is a plus one. Now, the part that I was emphasizing, maybe I use a green here to go around, this, this should be our period. And if you count exactly how many elements you have in the period, you have exactly six of them, yes? So if you have, so this root inner product with itself was six, yes? And now you see why. So this is a vector which realizes a root. So the other numbers on the diagonal are zero. So this is, these are in the period 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0. Yes, so you have 6, uh, you have 16, so the diagonal, higher diagonal, is a four by four torus. Yes, and uh, the uh, and the root has exactly three factorial, which is six. So this is the order the <coughs> the order of the subjacent vial group, six uh, plus minus ones. And you can uh, emphasize, uh, if you want, the geometric structure a little bit here by making these hexes which are perpendicular to they are perpendicular to the vial mirrors. And as you can recognize here, these uh, graphs, so each, each of these uh, elements around the uh, center of the mirrors form exactly one of the weight, weight permutohedra.
So this is a weight permitohedra. And we're going to call them hexes. A weight permitohedra. So these are the ones that appear in the theory of Hermann Weyer. And you can see the uh, problem now is precisely to uh, to show that the inner product between two roots, which we have defined uh, by our root formula, is exactly the inner product between the corresponding vectors. Yes? So let's define the map now. Uh, for technical reasons, we're going to define the following. Uh, the, um, so for a, uh, a, a root on ribbon is a weight um, I. I is, uh, is in the weights of G. Uh, with together with a uh, uh, with a vertex of the graph G, and in this case our graph G is equal to the vertex of A N of A at some level L. Let's just call it the vertices of A, which are exactly also they are they are the weights. So it's in the weights of G. Cut off at coxet N. So both are weights, and. Uh, so we're going to map this root into uh, the following mirrors. So we position uh, a fine vial mirrors, the fine vial group centered at and for some technical reason, it's negative i. This is necessary for the proof, but uh, since the vial group, uh, because of the symmetry of the vial group, we could take plus i as, just as well, but we'll take negative i. And um, reflect the root the, uh, excuse me, the uh, weight V plus rho plus V. With it. with signs. And this is our root. So uh, v, is the, v, v is viewed here as the highest weight. And uh, uh, since we have the additive center, so this is the vector rho plus v. And what we want to show is that the inner product between uh, uh, I, V, 
and uh, J U this is the inner product on the ribbon where this is the inner product between the corresponding vectors Let's let's give them a name H I H and H J U. Uh, so these are these what you had up there was exactly the higher so this is the higher H I J. So this is your H I J. And this thing should have been in blue. And this is a higher H. So that's what we're building now, the higher uh, vectors of type HIJ. And now, uh, notice that what we need is that the position of the mirrors plus rho the position of mirrors, which is I, plus rho, plus V, that this should be uh, in the root, should have parity zero. That is, it should be in the root lattice. Yes, so the mirrors, the center of the mirrors may be a weight. A rho in this case is a root for SL2, but for SL, for SL3, but for SL4 is not a root, and for SL2 is not a root either. But if you add in the end the, the dot, the pebble of the higher kaleidoscope, yes, we shouldn't uh, forget to advertise it as well by. Uh, giving the whole construction a name. So this is a kaleidoscope. Yes, this is exactly what you see when you put a pebble in the usual kaleidoscope. This is a kaleidoscope of SL, SL3. So it's a vile kaleidoscope. And you see, you put the red pebble, the red pebble should be on a root, in the root lattice. And it's reflected. So, uh, now to prove this, so remember our formula for the inner product between uh, uh, IV. and Ju on the ribbon. So this is equal to uh, the sum over vile elements of um, the sine of W. And then we took uh, uh, I So what we did was we took fusion here. Yes, so this is epsilon of W times the fusion from I 
plus W rho and V to evaluate it in JU. And this is a sum over of the signs epsilon of W. And this fusion is uh, the dimension of home of uh, sigma j minus i plus minus w rho tends uh, uh, v, but in this case, v is also a representation which we'll call sigma v up to sigma u. Because this is in the graph a n in the vertices of a, which are the irreducibles of uh, G at N, and uh, we need to use our uh, uh, formula here uh, for, the, um, uh, for this tensor product. We have computed it before. This tensor product is a sum, so this, is, this here is a, so it's again the sum of epsilon of W times the sum of uh, x in the weights of uh, v of uh, sigma j minus i minus w rho plus x up to sigma u. And this is the dimension of home. And again, we have the x are uh, the weights of the sigma v, of the representation v. And these weights, uh, you add to them the, the rho vector, yes? So this part here is exactly the uh, uh, delta alternating, the vial alternating Laplacian of the weights of uh, sigma v. Yes, and so what, you, what you're going to get is a sum of epsilon of V, W, times uh, the number of uh, homes from uh, sigma uh, J minus I minus uh, w of rho plus v up to sigma u. So this is a vial uh, numerator. And Now, um, and let's move the sigma j. We're, we're going to move it here. Uh, sigma minus j plus u using Frobenius reciprocity. So now, look, we have this sigma minus j plus u. And... Uh, uh, yes, so what we have is uh, minus j is, is here, uh, the, the highest weight here is negative j plus u. Um, here's the 
uh, what we're going to get. Uh, <coughs> just a bit, this is the vial vector rho. And uh, so the first formula was uh, the one of Hermann Weil, and now we'll use a Katz Walton formula, namely, um, each of these is going to be brought to the main vial alcove with signs plus and minus. So in that vial alcove, we're going to look for, uh, so this formula is a Katz-Walton formula. And we're looking in that alcove whether we, so this is minus J plus U, and this is sigma minus J plus U in the main alcove. And we bring all the others by reflections, minus plus, and we check whether they are the same. The number of homes, yes? But they are the same, so you get here, get plus minus one, precisely if uh, minus i plus w of rho plus v, this is a first permutohedron, permutohedron, why? Yes, is, I have 10 more seconds here. Arthur is looking worried. Precisely if, if uh, uh, the left member is in the weight permutohedron, of rho minus j plus u. And that ends the proof. Yes, so notice, okay, let me make the picture here, assuming that you have written that. So this is just an explanation. You see, when do you get a coincidence? When do you get such a home? When this is either here, you see this left member. If it's here, it's good. You get exactly this sign. Or it's in the reflection with sign negative. Or if it's any of the reflections, yes? So that's exact. So the second, the first root, it's beautiful, the first root, so the left-hand side, this is vile, and the right-hand side, it's Katz-Walton. So the first one you, you get by summing uh, the uh, representation, translating it, and it's a vile numerator. Yes, that's, a, that's exactly a, a permutohedron. And the other one, when you count the coincidence, you use exactly the coincidence with the vial permutohedron of the target, which is a Katz-Walton formula, which is uh, West zumino witten in physics, yes? So, and that does it. So that shows that the inner product of these uh, diagonal elements is exactly the inner product on the ribbon. Yes, so for me that 
kind of validated the ribbon because uh, I had uh, kind of guessed the, uh, an inner product on the higher ribbon, but uh, here all of a sudden the, uh, we got vectors in the case AN, yes, which, uh, which satisfy this. And at the beginning of the next lesson, I'll show how something which is new even in the usual case of the ABCD of the classical Lie algebras, uh, how to use orbifolds of the ribbon to get uh, the cases BCD. So uh, you will have an extra very strange mirror in the middle of the room and how to do the same on the higher ribbon. Yes, so how to do BCDs and so. Uh, so all of a sudden, is these, yellow rib these yellow mirrors were changing sign, and in the middle of them, you have a mirror which preserves sign. Very strange mirror. And then the whole question is, what happens to you if you enter in that strange mirror that preserves your sign? You know what happens if you enter a mirror which changes sign? You get zero, yes? Cancel. But otherwise, not. Yes? So you can remain a single person that would be shorter than two. So that's a short route. <laughs> yes? That's your orthogonal BN. Or you can remain a, a number two. You can get U plus your together with your companion in the mirror. And that will be the, uh, the case C, the symplectic case, and we'll interpret those polynomials in the symplectic case. And uh, finally, the case D, which is, uh, which is uh, quite a bit trickier. There you must have the same length when you enter the mirror, so try to figure out a mechanism there where you have two ones before, and you enter the mirror and you still have two ones. Very good, so we stop here.